Okay, all right, starting with the agenda under approval of minutes for uh, previous meetings, uh, the February 20th meeting minutes will be moved. February 20th, you gotta be uh, Under local <laughs> laws introduced, we have lo local law D uh, by finance, which you guys didn't pick that up today, did you? Uh, no, because I have my answer. Okay. Okay, by finance, it would just be intro. I honestly, I'll have my actual name on it. Oh, you going to put that Okay, all right. I'm always putting an exemption. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finance to finance. You got that? Yeah. Okay. All right, under local laws held, number three, which is local law B, as amended, will be a pass. Okay. And also, number four. On local law C, mm -hmm. um, I think I indicated that we yep. don't want to do an amendment on that. Yep, I was getting to that. Oh, okay. All right. This so, for um, the Accusation. Mm -hmm. So that means that it's passed out on the committee. Yeah, planning. Um, okay. And it's going to be a pass tonight. Yeah, that's the plan. We're voting on it. I, I, I don't mean to say pass. It, it'll be up for a vote tonight. <laughs> I, uh, I, want, I brought this up with the committee, and I'm not trying to prolong the process. Um, and we, I, I, I apologize. I missed the caucus on Friday, I mean, Wednesday, where I was hoping to bring this up. Um, but we had, I had spoken that I, uh, I think the council should see the final contract and have a say in the RFP uh, as well. Right now, um, the way it stands, it all goes to a five-person committee uh, where they have the say in the RFP and the contract. I think this is something that the full council should have a say in. There's something I want to see in the RFP, specifically a, uh, an expanding of what's already in the RFP, uh, which guarantees the best prices for uh, HIP, not HIP, uh, HIP, HIP, HIP. HIP. Uh, uh, users. I'd like to see that expanded to all residents. It would guarantee that if no resident would pay more than um, with National Grid. It would also shift the burden of risk from the consumer to the supplier. So there's some things I want to see in the RFP and there's some things I want to see in the contract. And my only fear is that if we vote on it currently the way it is, um, you know, we don't have another say. And I, I take full blame for not being here on Wednesday, and I take full blame for missing uh, one of the planning meetings where this was discussed. So I'm not shifting the blame. I know uh, a lot of people have worked on this for a long time and worked really hard to try to address everyone's concern. I have been talking about these two things that I like to see in the contract from the very beginning, when we first started talking about this a year and a half ago. Um, so I don't want the fact that I missed two meetings um, be reason why we don't have something that I think uh, you know, will be critical because we don't want to be in a situation where something changes and we don't have a say in it anymore. And then we don't agree with something. And you know, this is going to affect every single resident. And we spent, and I, I'll give credit to the committee because the committee spent more, a lot of time on working on adjusting the uh, app out letter. I think we should have just as much time as looking at the RFP and the final contract. That's just my two cents. Okay, uh, so I don't do want to respond to that, and we have talked a little bit about this. Um, the uh, question proposal goes out, uh, the ESCOs, the, you know, the energy, uh, companies have 30 days to reply, um, and, and uh, you know, 
offer certain bids. And once those bids are offered, we have all of 48 hours to make a decision as far as whether to accept them or not. And the reason that is is because um, the price of electricity is very uh, goes up and down all the time, and day to day. So you can't, uh, the, you know, we talk about what would be involved if we brought it back to the full council, and it, it just seemed like it was not. Uh, it wasn't something that uh, was feasible to get the people to live together, and also. Oversight board that was formed and is in the local law. It has two council members on it. It has two from the mayoral administration and it has a person from either the chair of the sustainability committee or their representative. Um, the two representatives could bring back the bids to, and, and you know, I've just put it out there that we understand that we're looking for. A, a better price than what the national grid uh, offers, better than the average price for the national grid. So we understand that people need, they can't be spending more. Um, so that's price a big part of it. Okay. You also mentioned that um, the council members should be able to go to that. Oh, no, it's just it's an, yeah. all these things. Yeah, so, Mr. Doss? So, so your input, you know, you can still give input. So when I sign up a committee, you know, I you know, set up the signs like pyramid, the signs like uh, we need to spending something. I sold avid energy per you know person. Uh, uh, folks have been running ever since they deregulated the um, so that people could um, have a choice. People have been coming to our neighborhoods, signing people up for things, and they signed up and they can close it with and it's presented. So, you know, on um, the pushback that you're going to, when this finally catches up with our um, neighborhood, a lot of people, they, they, um, it's like people have to, we have to opt out. <coughs> so you should have a choice to opt in and not opt out because with, with the experience that um, people have had in our um, area is not followed. And then when you, you're locked in to um, the agreement um, that you signed, so, you know, um, like I said, it sounds like a pyramid, and it looks like some way or, or, or uh, it's going to go. I don't know how that's going to be going. Uh, this, is, this is one of the uh, things we've been talking about for quite a bit because we understand that a lot of people had bad experiences when they signed up with different ESCOs. Um, but we've got, in this situation, we uh, basically were partnering with this administrative organization, Mega Energy, and they have a very extensive, careful uh, review process to make sure that ESCO that they choose uh, to provide the energy from is, um, you know, is something they're going to look, you know, take a very close look at to make sure they're going to, um, there's no the fees. Mr. O'Brien. The bill that was given to, you know, like, and with respect to the time that we put in there, but I brought that up, you know, when I was on the on planning committee. This sounds a lot like, I just couldn't remember the name, and then when the gentleman said it, it was only about five of the different ones. So, like, um, this is just, it just makes it, and then the time factor, because we can't bring it all the way back to the uh, community, you know, um, so. That part makes it um, a little uncomfortable. Okay. And, but, and but, and we, but we have had... I point out too that we have 13 other municipalities that are moving forward. The idea is, you know, we're going to save people money and we're going to move towards 100% renewable energy, which is a really, uh, you know, that's something we can be really proud of. Okay, Mr. O'Brien, and then we're going to move on. The mega lady came to our neighborhood meeting last Wednesday night, and there's not a guarantee of saving money. She, she no, has a fact. There is space like that. The mega lake is here then tonight. Yes. Louise, you want to respond well, to Well, let me ask, okay. let me further with my question. So, I'm, I'm not, I, I agree with Alfredo. You know, I get very suspicious of boards to start doing things that don't seem to be consistent with public policy. Policies that we've articulated. Uh, so, 
I guess I don't quite understand that something we have to rush into a decision 48 hours after a response from our comes in, and there's no guarantee that that rate's going to stay in place for any appreciable period of time. So why the 48-hour rush? And I'm in mean, a mystery to understand. Yes, sure. So, sure. So the rate does stay in place for the term. So usually, and that's a year. Two years usually is more like. Um, that's been the sweet spot in the market right now. The reason for the rush is that it's a commodity, and that price can change. So you're but all. Why? Why is it going to change in the first 48 hours, but not in the next year? I guess that's what happened. Uh, because because they go out and procure the electricity company is procuring the electricity or the hedges for the electricity, but to know that they need to do that. All 13 municipalities need to act in a fairly small amount of time. If we let you off have a month, for example, they would have to build in a huge amount of margin into that price to ensure that they can guarantee that price through any change in the market. Please. Yes. You said that the, the products are changing. When we spoke, you said the products are changing mm -hmm. and they're going into the direction of guarantees. Yes. If we put it in our RFP, and this is why I think it's so important that the council has a say in the RFP and in the contract. If we put it in the RFP that we are looking for that guarantee, mm -hmm. doesn't that void the need to just you know, rush turnaround because they're going to guarantee it no matter what time, what rate it is. So would that then that ease that burden of having to get it well, such a quick turnaround? They're still going to do the math, and if they, I mean, we're, we are going to put it in the RFP that we prefer a supplier, we talked about this the other day, and my team agreed, we'll put it in the RFP that we're going to prefer a supplier that offers a guarantee. I don't know if they're going to be far enough along in their product development to do that for us. No CTA has that yet in the United States. The market is going there. I don't know how long it will take to get there. We're going to see it. But I, 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 I'm a strong believer the customer mm -hmm. uh, yields the market. And if Albany, the city of Albany, that has a 25% poverty rate and has a 50% uh, rate where people are living above, uh, uh, pay more than 30 percent for their housing. Mm -hmm. If us, the capital, is saying, can we get this change? You're already on your way there. We can be at the tipping point if we push the I issue. So. <laughs> um, and I, I actually think it would benefit them as well. Mm -hmm. Because in the opt out letter, you said at the last meeting that a lot of people opt out automatically yeah. because they get this opt out letter. The but if we if we out. put in the opt out letter that the contract that the city of Albany signed up for has a guarantee that you will never pay more than what you would be paying with National Grid, it would benefit the supplier because they would have less people opting out mm -hmm. right before they even get started. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there is some opportunities with getting the supplies to shift their products. Okay. All right, so we're moving on. We've, there have been several planning meetings. This is a very important issue. You want folks to have all the information when they're making decisions. But we've, we've, we've been down this road a lot. So, tonight, um, we will not have an opportunity to be part of this advocate. Um, and so you want to you wanna is, is bring it up for a vote tonight? That's correct. Okay, all right. I, That's I, 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 last. I last question for JR. In the local law, did we get the word you put in that you can opt out at any time without penalty? Yes. Okay. I just want to verify that. Can, can we put it in? Can we put in the language for today? Because I'm afraid I want this to pass. I, I, I want know. this to pass. I don't know if it has to vote right now. To be honest with you, Take I don't know if it has to vote. And I want this to pass. Can we put in the language that this, the council will have the ability? to see the contract and the R to approve the contract and the RFP. I think if you put that in the language today, you'll have the votes today to move this right. forward. I'm not sure if you have the votes without it. Unfortunately, as a legal standpoint on a local law, it has to age for seven years in the final form, meaning if any amendments are done, it auto if the amendment is done today, it automatically dies. Yeah. And it has to be staged for another seven years. All right, so just to get Basic straw poll. Who's comfortable with? Who's going to be voting? Who's, who's, not, who's not comfortable with voting on this? I'm not comfortable with it. We're at 10, right? 
Two, three. Ten of us. Yeah. Right, who's... Right, right, so... Infant, you do, right, okay, so... Right. <coughs> So, right, so, 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 you're always like that. No, I just don't. I don't struggle. So, people start calling me to change my vote. So, at this two or three buttons. That's the whole point there. It is not. It is a carefully thought out program authorized by New York State. Um, I mean, we sent out this. Uh, how the RFP is going to be evaluated. Um, it's much, much different than somebody coming to the Can we can I can we make can we make an adjustment to this legislation to add those those two provisions? Uh, to allow the council to have a say on the RFP and the contract, um, and then do a special meeting in seven days to get this pushed through. Is that a possibility? You know, and, and can I get some information from I Mega, please? Can I just, I don't know that that's actually a good idea. I mean, if we have to do something within 48 hours, I think we're setting ourselves up for failure to do a full council meeting. And that I personally think that having council members be able to attend the meeting of that group okay. and to have input in that group, I, to me that is Just the same thing. Vote. As, as vote. someone that has right. to deal if with the planning department and the planning board, and we, we, we can speak, but we don't have a vote, and we don't but have we a say. Have so with the, at this point right now, it, it doesn't look it doesn't look I mean, Ms. Frederick's not here. Do you want to wait? Do you, do you want? To I'll, I'll come back to this. We'll come back. Right. Okay. All right. So that was uh, local law B. We're, we'll come back to it. Uh, Mr. Mr. Okay. All right. So on on to number four, local laws, local law C. Mr. Conti plans on offering some floor amendments. Yeah, four minutes. It's an amendment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, all right, so on to ordinances. We have uh, an MC ordinance by Mr. O'Brien. You wanna uh, real quick? Well, uh, this is essentially the same ordinance regarding Bug Plasma that we passed the last time. But we uh, anticipate a veto from the mayor based on uh, the fact that we didn't do a quote public hearing and didn't do a form of seizure. So, and we haven't gotten back to the mayor yet, but we anticipate a veto. So I'm reintroducing this so we can do the public hearing mm -hmm. and can do the seeker at our next meeting. There you go. Okay, that's it. Sounds good. All right. That's for the thousand feet. That's it? Yeah. yeah. So all over all right. the so, so then uh, on to ordinances held. Number seven. It's uh, ordinance 34-101-19, MC, uh, the, co the uh, birth and death records increase. Uh, yes, this is for uh, Council Operations Committee uh, on... 27. 27. Um, with a, uh, yeah, Positive yeah, record. Um, this is the one just, uh, remember, we have uh, the current uh, fee is set $10 for the subsequent uh, session. 
that authorizes us to set up the state health department in charge, which is up to $30. Uh, this proposal will increase it from 10 to 15, um, having not been increased since 91. Uh, and uh, there are exemptions in the law, so uh, you know, uh, requests related to the form. Uh, it's okay. Um, yes, there's, there are several mentions in the law which allow me to waive the fee, and I also exercise discretion. Any of the fire victims, because we've had an uptick in fires, mm -hmm. we've all waived the fees for them. Um, it's basically not to create a financial burden to anyone, but just so that we're taking enough in to, uh, to afford the increase in operational costs. Okay. And the majority of the requests are actually not Right, for the hospital. So, okay, so that'll be up for, that'll be up for vote. Okay. Be up for vote. Uh, down to number 10, ordinance 46 122 19. That's Mr. Igos is withdrawn. He's going to be withdrawing it. Correct. <coughs> All right, uh, on to resolutions introduced. 15. Actually, it wasn't mine, it was a law, whatever. Oh, law, law, the law <coughs> committee. All right, uh, resolutions introduced. Uh, the re resolution 153120 is uh, um, is Miss Farrell. We'll be going to finance. Okay, uh, 163120 R uh, is Mr. Anani's uh, requesting the permanent 12.5 million from the, uh, from the state. That'll be passed. Can we all co-sponsor? Yeah, yeah, can, we, can I get on that? All right, so. No, uh, those, 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 are, no, those are not here. Uh, no, no, you all say. That's a good okay. idea to me. Uh, next up is 173120 yards, Mrs. Doshate, which uh, I'll move for her because she's not here. Okay. Um, and that, that'll be an intro and hold. And hold. Waiting for her. Okay. It has to, excuse me? All oh, right. That's what the H is for. That's what the H is for. <laughs> Housing. How's that all complete? Okay, uh, next is 183120 uh, R. Uh, that's Mr. Igos. Okay, I'll do that in the next one. Jackson okay, here. and then uh, 193120 R was Mr. Flynn's. Mr. Igo will move that. Also, intro that. Uh, next, 2031. Wait, to pass it. 20, yeah, to pass. Those are passes. Um, 203120 yeah. R is Mr. Ballerin's uh, resolution uh, for India. Uh, it's a, it'll be a pass. All co-sponsors. All co-sponsors. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 213120R, uh, Mr. Conti's. Uh, yeah. uh, right, right. The 16th. Is it the 16th? And it can, on the 16th, it can hearing and pass, right? And if it's no problem. Okay. Okay. Okay, and next, who's up? Um, it's just seeing how, okay. Okay. It's got an age and then got to the hearing, public hearing. Okay, next is uh, resolution uh, 223120R, uh, adjustment in. Uh, building and regulatory compliance. It'll be from Ms. Farrell going to the finance. Yeah. <coughs> That's it. Okay. Uh, well, one sec. On the rest, we should tell. Uh, number, f did I do four? Number four, yeah. uh, resolution 31220R, uh, that passed uh, finance positive yeah. recommendation. That'll yeah. be a that'll be a pass. Uh, number eight, agenda item number eight, resolution 82120R, also uh, finance uh, po passed with a positive recommendation. So that'll be a pass. Uh, number nine is uh, Ms. Fahey's from planning. It's the the resolution portion of the CCA um, that passed with a positive recommendation. That'll be a pass. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. It's the opt out letter. It's the opt out letter. Yeah. 
Number 10, resolution 10, 21, 20 R. Uh, again, finance, that was... Uh, that passed with no recommendation. With, with no recommendation. Um, but it's... It, it's a I think it, on a whole, the, um, the finance committee is... Supportive. Is, Alfredo, is for the whole position, like the council. Um, there, just, there was a question in the community to one of the numbers. Okay. But. So we'll be voting on that. Uh, number 11 uh, was set to move or, or be voted on, but the, two of the sponsors are out of town, so it's going to be a hold for, uh, for resolution 11 21 20R. Uh, down to number 12, resolution 12 21 20R uh, went to finance, also uh, came out with a positive recommendation, so that will be a pass. And a threat. And then uh, Mr. Nani's, uh, you want to, number 13, 14, 22, 20R, that will be a pass. Mm -hmm. That's it. We got to get in, 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Should we limit the time for peace? <laughs> limit what? Well. And we all, 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 and for that, for 13, get all of us, all of us.